So this problem, we have a graph, and this graph is the base of an object, and we're going to compute the value of the volume of a solid that's going to be above this object. And it says the cross sections perpendicular to the base are squares. Now, that could mean that the cross sections look like this. There are squares like that, and then a cross section over here would look like that. Uh, however, it could also mean that the cross sections look like this. Let me draw it the other angle. Look like this and are squares. So just reading this problem, it's not possible to determine which one it is. Uh, however, I work through it and the cross sections are gonna be going vertically like this. And then the squares will be drawn like that over top. Okay, so we're gonna do quite a few things here. So first we're gonna need a function for each side. Now, there are some lines here that you should be able to write down the equations for those really easy, because they're just lines, like y equals four, y equals negative four, and if we need the vertical line, that's x equals five. So those are pretty easy. So what I did is I redrew, well I copied and pasted and blew it up, but reproduced the region right here, and we know our cross sections need to be vertical, so they're drawn right here. All right, so first of all, why did I split it up into two different regions? Because if you look, there's a top function here, and then a second top function over here, and whenever you change top and or bottom function, you have to partition the region. So that means that we have to split this into region one and region two. And what I did is I called the top function f, the bottom function g, and then the first region's top function is f1, the second region's top function is f2, and then g1 and g2 are the two bottom functions. And to get this line, this linear function right here, what we need to do is go through and figure out what is the equation of the line. So we know it's y equals mx plus b, here, the y-intercept is 0, so b is 0. And all we need to do is write down the slope, and if we go up 4 over 3, that's 4 thirds. There's another way to get the uh, equation of any line. If you have two points on the line, which I just circled two points right there, you can uh, get the line that way as well. So however you want to create that line, we get 4 thirds x, and then the bottom g1 function is negative 4 thirds x. Okay, so now we're ready to, let's see, write down the area uh, of a cross section. So we know our cross sections are squares. So we have, we'll do region one first because I called it region one. And we're starting with the base. So I label this function B1 of X. It's the base function in region one. So it's B1. And it's gonna always, all these are big minus small. And what's the big function is g1, the small function, uh, big function is f1, because on the top, small function is g1, it's on the bottom, and you just subtract the two right here, and you get 8 thirds x. All right, so that is the base one. Now, we have to get the area, uh, and this is the area of region one. So how do we do that? Well, the area is gonna be a square, and good news is we know the base. And how do you get the area of a square? Well, it's the base times the base, or the side times the side, or side squared. The other problems that are similar to this problem, your cross sections are not squares. So what is gonna change on those problems is what I have right here in red. So some of those are triangles, some are half circles. So a triangle is one half base times height. Uh, if your triangle is equilateral, also known as equal angular, the height's a little more tricky. You have to cut it in half and then figure out uh, what the height is. Uh, slightly easier said than done, uh, but I'm not gonna cover that here. So we got our area one is the square of the base and that's all computed right here and then reduced into uh, 64 over nine X squared. Now we're gonna put that into the volume integral right here and all we need is A and B Good news is these have really nice x values that you don't need to uh, do any algebra to get. You can read them right off the graph. Our small x value is zero, big one is three. So we're going from zero to three and integrating the a1 
function, which is a 64 ninths x squared, anti-power rule, plug in endpoints, and you get 64. Okay, so that's the first region. Now the second region is actually quite a bit more simple because the top and bottom function are four and negative four. So you do the exact same process and four minus negative four is eight and you square that base. Well, the base is always eight. So the area is always gonna be eight squared or 64. Integrate 64 from three to five and you get 64 X, plug in the endpoints, you can get 128. All right, the total volume is gonna be both of these volumes added together. So you just add up volume one, volume two, and you get 192 for my numbers. Now your numbers are gonna be different, but you're gonna go through the same process when you do the other similar questions, you're just gonna to have to pay attention. Your area is not gonna be a square, so you're gonna to have to adjust your area formula. However, all those questions, you're still gonna have two regions, region one and region two. So everything else is basically gonna be the same.